Beauty friends, welcome back to another story. My name is Miss B and I am the creator of this YouTube channel and I'm also the founder of Miss B Tutoring. I'm so excited that you are here today. If you haven't already done so, you can visit me at Books with Miss B, my Instagram page. There you can make book requests and just stop by, say hello. I absolutely love it when you do. Before we get started with today's story, I need you, my sweet human, to lean in super close and I want you to listen to this one very important thing. You, my sweet human sitting right there, are absolutely perfect, just the way you are. So please don't try to be anybody else. Don't do it, just be you. Got it? Miss B loves you like crazy from the bottom of my heart. Okay, so today is in fact a book request. It's an extra special story that hits very close to my own heart. It is from my sweet, sweet friend, Miss Chloe. Hi, Chloe, thank you so much for being so patient. It took me a while to get this book, but here it is, and this story is just for you. Okay, also, for any of my little friends sitting right there, it's possible, quite possible, that you might have what my sweet friend Rufus the bear has, um, and that is called type one diabetes. My own daughter, some of you might know, has type one diabetes. She is 10 years old, but she found out she had type one when she was three. And today I'm wearing her shirt that she created. We get to participate every year in an event hosted by the organization JDRF. And they are an organization that helps kiddos and adults alike with type one diabetes. So we walk every year for a cure and Izzy every year creates her own t-shirt. So this story today, um, I will be wearing Izzy's t-shirt that she made to help support all those with type 1 diabetes. So let's get started. Today's story is called Rufus Comes Home. Rufus the Bear with Diabetes. This is written by Kim Gosselin and it's illustrated by Terry Ravenelli. If you know somebody with type 1, um, then you might know some of the things that kiddos or adults have to do with type 1. And if you've never even heard of it before, you're going to learn a lot today. I think you're going to like this story. Let's get started. Brian felt very sick. For quite a few weeks, he felt weak, tired, thirsty, and seemed to go to the bathroom all the time. Brian didn't feel like himself at all. Brian's family took him to the doctor to try to find out why he felt so sick. His doctor told his family that she thought Brian might have a condition called type 1 diabetes. She sent them all to the hospital right away. Brian's family doctor had been right. Soon after he got to the hospital, special diabetes doctors and nurses checked his blood for extra sugar or glucose with a glucose meter. Brian pricked his finger. The nurse helped him touch a drop of his blood to the test sensor. The test sensor drew the blood away from Brian's finger and they waited for the meter to beep. They also took some blood from his arm and sent it to a laboratory for tests. It's not fun to get a blood draw if you've ever had one, I know. Sure enough, Brian had too much sugar in his blood. Brian learned that having diabetes meant his body could not turn the extra sugar in his blood into the energy that his body needed. That's why Brian had felt so sick and tired all the time during the last few weeks. It's not fun to feel like that. Brian discovered that when his diabetes was not in good control, like when he had to go to the hospital, he felt really sick. His body made him go to the bathroom a lot because it was trying to get rid of all the extra sugar it had in it. People without diabetes have something their bodies make called insulin that takes care of all that kind of stuff. Insulin is a hormone that is made by cells in a part of the body called the pancreas. Can you say pancreas? The pancreas is near the stomach. Having diabetes meant that Brian's pancreas cells didn't make enough insulin. Because Brian's body didn't make enough insulin, he and his family had to learn a lot about having diabetes and what that would mean in their lives. For example, he learned about different ways the body could get the needed insulin that his body no longer made. At first, Brian started to get two or more shots of insulin. He also learned that he might eventually use an insulin pump to get the insulin when he was ready. Brian didn't like the idea of getting shots every day. Who would? But after he got the insulin, he felt so much better. Brian and his family learned more and more about diabetes every day. 
They learned from diabetes teachers in the hospital that it was best if Brian ate his meals and snacks at about the same time each day. It was important for his family to have a regular schedule each and every day, even when Brian went to school or played sports. Not being on a regular schedule or not eating when he was supposed to could make Brian really sick. He learned about highs when he had too much sugar in his blood and all about lows when he didn't have enough food in his body to balance the insulin from his shot. Lows meant Brian needed to get some sugar and, body, and food into his body right away. Brian wished he knew someone else who had diabetes. He knew he could always talk to his family about his feelings and of course the doctors and the nurses too, but still, as much as they all wanted to help, they didn't have diabetes like Brian did, did they? Brian longed for someone or something special to share his private diabetes feelings with. After practicing giving shots to oranges in the hospital, Brian's mother kissed him goodbye. She had a few errands to catch up on before Brian's family brought him home from the hospital. Besides, his grandma was with him too. And grandma was happy to sit and talk with him until Brian's mother got back to the hospital. It felt good to have grandma there with him. After finishing her, her errands, Brian's mother quickly stopped by a toy store to find a special surprise to take back to the hospital for Brian. Finally, his mother's bright green eyes spotted a perfect little friend for Brian, a warm, cuddly, stuffed teddy bear that sat lonely on the toy shelf waiting for someone to love. Brian's mother knew that that bear would be a, loved a great deal by Brian. Brian's mother dropped off a few things at home and then realized that there were just a few more things to do before she went back to the hospital. Brian's mother remembered what her son had told her earlier, that he wished he had a special someone or something to share his private diabetes feelings with. Brian's mother thought the new bear might be the perfect listener for him. Brian's mother gently and lovingly hand sewed felt patches on different parts of the bear's body in exactly the same spots where Brian now had to get his insulin shots. She carefully cut out little red felt hearts and sewed them on the bear's paws where Brian now had to do his finger pricks. I'm gonna show you on Rufus. So he's been around for about seven years, but these are the spots that he could practice doing finger pricks on. And these are the spots in green where he could practice giving shots over here and shots here and shots here on the leg and on the tummy, squishy patches. He's so cute. Pretty awesome of Brian's mom too, right? Finally, the finishing touches a little t-shirt from JDRF that fit just right on the bear. Now the bear with diabetes was perfect, just like Brian. After a few hours, Brian's mother hurried back to the hospital where she found him and his grandma playing a board game. Now that Brian was getting the insulin his body needed, he was almost back to his old self. For the first time in a long time, Brian was smiling again. Brian's mother handed Brian a great big bag of red with a red bow on it. Inside was Brian's special new bear. Brian pulled it out and hugged it with all his might. He named the bear Rufus, the bear with diabetes, right away. Brian couldn't wait until he could show his diabetes doctors and nurses his new bear. As soon as they came into his room, he showed them how he could not only test his own blood sugar now, which is awesome, but also Rufus's. Soon it was time for Brian's shot. This time it wasn't nearly so bad. Brian got his insulin shot first, then Rufus got his shot too. It was a lot more fun than practicing on an orange. Right. Finally, it was time for Brian and Rufus to go home. As soon as they got to Brian's house, they found a special place for all of Brian's and Rufus's diabetes supplies. Soon, the whole family settled into their new routine. Brian, whatever Brian did, Rufus did too. Late that night, when everyone was in bed and the house was all dark and quiet, a tiny small voice could be faintly heard coming from Brian's bedroom. Do you know what that voice was? Brian's mother could hear her son whispering to his new friend, Rufus. Somewhere deep in her heart, she knew that Rufus was the special something that could really understand Brian and his private diabetes thoughts. Reassuring words could be heard echoing late into the night. 
a small boy and an even smaller bear somehow understood each other. Brian's mother finally, peacefully, closed her eyes and gently fell asleep for the first time in many, many nights. Yes, everything would be all right. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story, Rufus Comes Home, Rufus the Bear with Diabetes. Thank you to my sweet friend, Chloe. Miss B loves you so much, like crazy. For all my friends who have type one diabetes who are listening to this story, I send you so much love. You guys are rock stars. I hope you know how truly amazing you are. Um, and Rufus wants to say goodbye to you. He says, if you like this story, you can press the like button, subscribe below to get more books with Misty stories every single week. Until next time, I will see you all. Bye. Mwah. Hi, my books with Miss B friends. Uh, I have something very important I want you all to know. Please, always remember this. Remember that it is always very, very important to love who you are. And don't try to be anybody else. without a doubt in my mind.